Well, hey guys, happy March 1st. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you some skincare, some beauty product reviews of things I've tried out over the month of February, which went by at a rapid pace. Now, I used to do monthly favorites and fails videos, but if you missed last month's video, I've changed it up this year to basically just have an opportunity to share with you all reviews of various products that I test out and maybe never have an opportunity to chat with you about in a dedicated video. First of all, a new moisturizer that I've seen in the drugstore, it is by Lubriderm. So Lubriderm is a brand that I frequently get asked about, what do you think of Lubriderm? I know them to be good moisturizers, but personally I've never really used one. And so I decided to try their new advanced therapy lotion and I really like it as a basic body moisturizer. It's pretty affordable. It has oat kernel oil in it, and I love any moisturizing product, any skincare product for that matter, with any type of ingredient from oats, whether it be colloidal oatmeal, oat kernel oil. I just find that my skin really appreciates oats. They have a variety of beneficial compounds in them for barrier recovery, for soothing dry, itchy skin. They're hydrating. I mean, really an underrated family of ingredients from oat. So I like that aspect of it. It has mineral oil, which is a amazing ingredient in a body moisturizer. It also has glycerin, which is very hydrating, free of fragrance. It does have a bit of an aroma to it. It does what it's supposed to do. It moisturizes the skin. It is a heavier consistency and it builds itself as being fast absorbing, but I have found in my experience using it um, as a body moisturizer that it does take a bit of time to absorb. It stays white on the skin for a while, which I don't mind. Importantly, the following morning, because I moisturize at night after getting out of the shower, the following morning, I don't have a filmy residue of moisturizer all over the place, so it truly does absorb into the skin and provide a nice hydrating, protective film to reduce water loss, but it doesn't leave like a waxy residue on the skin surface. Because it is a heavier consistency, a thicker, richer formula, it's one where I don't know that everyone is going to enjoy trying it on the face. Some people might, but I always point out, you know, it's worth trying a moisturizer for the body on the face because if it ends up working out for you, great. Because this one is heavier, I suspect it may be uncomfortable for some of you, especially if you have oilier skin or you have rosacea. It may precipitate a flush. Heavier moisturizers can be aggravating for some people. But by and large, I really like it. I like the price point and I like the pump. I've complained about this to you all before, but some pump packaging or honestly some packaging in general is just not, it just doesn't meet my needs and it may not meet your needs. Some, some pumps are too slow to release and it takes all day to get the moisturizer amount that you need. As I said, I moisturize from head to toe. One thing I need from my body moisturizer is the ability to efficiently dispense product so that I can get the moisturizer on my body in a, in a timely manner. I don't wanna to have to sit there and wait for the pump to release in a slow fashion. It'll take forever. And I want a good amount of product. I always complain on the flip side that some products put out too much product, but when it's a body moisturizer, we have a lot more surface area that we're targeting. I need it to give me, give me a good, good amount out. So all in all, I've really liked it a lot. Moving on, a sunscreen from Eucerin. I've shared this with you all in my vlogs off and on. I've been trying it out. They have a new line. Yes, the Immersive Hydration line. This is their daily lotion, SPF 30. It's a facial moisturizer with hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is great for improving the moisture content in skin's outermost layer, ultimately helping to support barrier function and with consistent use and improved water retention in skin's outermost layer. The better water content allows for the enzymes there to function better so that you have better cell turnover. Plus this is a sunscreen, so it's protecting the skin from the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation. It is nice and moisturizing. It is an organic, aka chemical sunscreen, so there's no white cast to this. I did not experience any burning or stinging around my eyes. It is not water resistant, so it's a great option as an everyday facial moisturizer. But if you're gonna be participating in sport, working up a sweat outside, I suggest choosing a water resistant formula. And this is good, nothing wrong with it. But a product that has really been wowing me 
is the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Gel. Now, I have been a long time fan of their Cicaplast Balm as a skin protectant. It's great if you have windburn, if you have a lot of peeling, flaking, irritation from a new topical or from getting a cosmetic peel. It's great. Great barrier cream, great skin protectant, excellent for reducing chafing, but they came out with a gel. And so I decided to try the gel form. And at first, putting it just on my skin, I was like, eh, I don't know, I need to go back to the, I need to go back to the balm. I'm not really getting barrier cream vibes from this. It doesn't really, I'm not buying that this is gonna reduce chafing as well as, as well as the, the Cicaplast balm. Because you have to understand, Cicaplast balm is almost like a diaper rash cream for adults to use on their face. Um, yes, you can use diaper rash cream on your face if you want to, but it's, it tends to be kind of heavy. This is, the, the Cicaplast Balm has dimethicone in it, so it's more fast absorbing, but the gel isn't really giving that. Here's where the gel has been blowing my mind. All right, I've been using this La Roche-Posay Cicaplast gel around my eyes for a couple of weeks now, and I have really seen a visible improvement in just the overall look of fine lines around my eyes, as well as I feel like my under eyes are a little bit tighter and brighter and smoother, more radiant. It's a glycerin-based skin protectant, which is, you know, glycerin's really hydrating, but I just put a little tiny bit there and, you know, rub it in. What I like about it is it's nice and lightweight, but it also creates this lightweight film on the skin surface that really helps protect eyelids from any kind of irritant getting on there and further like drying out your eyes. I've been so impressed with this. Not sponsored. This is fragrance free. It's really good. As a skin protectant, like for dry irritated hands or chapped lips, chapped skin, it's not as good as their Cicaplast Balm, but as an eye cream, it's amazing. I have used it on my lips a few times. It is nice and hydrating, but I'm telling you, as an eye cream, and I don't use eye creams, I just use my regular moisturizer around my face, but this, as an eye cream, I've been impressed. It has made a huge difference in the appearance of the skin around my eyes. Well, by huge, I mean like I see a difference. There's a noticeable difference in that the, my under eye area looks smoother, brighter, and the little fine lines around my eyes are a lot less obvious. This formula has glycerin, it has panthenol, it has dimethicone in it, a skin protectant. It also has hyaluronic acid. And what I like about it around the eyes is that it's not heavy. It's, it, it doesn't feel heavy. It just feels like a nice hydrating protective film and it doesn't run around my eyes and feel oily. I've also tried putting this on the lips. That's fine. You do get a little bit of a sweet taste from the glycerin, whatever. I mean, don't need a whole tube of it, but it is safe to use on your lips if you want to. I prefer to use petroleum jelly CeraVe healing ointment on my lips to this, but yes, you certainly could use it that way. Product number four is another one that has kind of blown my mind quite a bit. It is a hair care product. It is the L'Oreal Ever Pure Simply Clean, I think it's called, Elastic Fiber Hair Mask. I mean, I just can't get over how good this hair mask is, the Simply Clean Elastic Fiber Mask. Uh, look how rich the formula is. It really does a number on your hair strands. If you've got long hair and you're looking for a good mask, you will not regret this decision. Wow, wow. My hair has gotten long again. Using this hair mask, it looks, my hair when I use the mask, it's shiny, it's silky, it's manageable, and it almost, in the mirror, especially, you know, out of the side eye and poor lighting, I'm like, did I get some kind of keratin hair treatment? You know, Biolage has a great hair mask. This from L'Oreal, move over Biolage. You know, if you go back to some of my older videos, hair care products I'm loving, always would talk about Biolage. This new one from L'Oreal, it outperforms the Biolage. It's, it's the aesthetics of it. And I love the consistency of this product. Elastic fiber, it's almost like, kind of like snail mucin that you get this stringy stuff, but it's thick and it really envelops all of the strands. My one gripe, but I mean, it's inevitable. It's in a jar, which I find to be a little challenging to use in the shower. You know, I turn the water off, of course, when I'm applying a mask to my hair, but then it's like, 
getting the jar back on tightly, the jar lid tightly enough so that the water from the shower doesn't make its way in there. But all in all, highly recommend trying this out if you have long hair. I think if you have short hair, it would be kind of useless. I don't feel as though people who have really short hair, unless you have curly hair, you know, conditioner, may not be necessary for you. I use conditioner to cut down on tangles, frizz, and to improve manageability. But when I've had shorter hair, conditioner is superfluous for my routine, and it may be for you. It is a really thick, really rich, and it does not have a scent to it. It does have rosemary leaf oil, so if you're allergic to fragrance, you might have a problem with that, but otherwise, um, there's no scent to it. Um, so that has really been amazing. The last product I wanna share with you guys is in the realm of makeup. It's actually three products. I have this now elaborate mascara routine that I shared with you all in the vlogs a couple of vlogs ago. So I got these mascaras from Winky Lux. I wanted to try Winky Lux. Uh, I have to admit, the packaging roped me in, have beautiful packaging. Um, you know, the flowers on the boxes, pretty, ooh, shiny. So I decided to try their mascaras. Not disappointed. The mascara primer goes on pink, dries down clear and colorless. It does a good job of creating a base that the mascara will adhere to better, but it also lengthens your lashes. So it, it creates a base to build off of for lash lengthening. Then on the top, I come in with their mascara and that mascara gives full and long, okay? But not clumpy, so I like that. Then they have this little tiny mascara called Detail Oriented. If you wanna elongate each individual bottom lash, this is, the, this is the tool. This is the product that you need to try. Because I have tried mascaras that have this fine, that offer this fine, applicator for bottom lashes, and I've even reviewed them favorably on here in past videos. This one really beats those. You can actively see your lash like getting long. You can see you can you can see lashes that you didn't see before. You know, there's little teeny tiny baby lashes here that are practically invisible. Pull this down over it and all of a sudden there's a lash there that's like long. It really it really does a good job. Wear it throughout the day. I don't get flakiness doesn't smudge, it doesn't get up on my upper upper eyelid. So taking it off, I use, I've been using, I was using the um, Elta MD oil and gel cleanser as a cleansing balm. I reviewed that in the last monthly video, by the way. I finished that. I've been using the Albaline Micellar Cleansing Milk as a first step. That product I've reviewed in other videos before, but that has been dissolving all of this, all, all, of, all of these three different mascaras. All right, y'all, those are things I tried out throughout February, my opinions on them. Hope this video was helpful to you all. Make sure you come back on April 1st, April Fool's Day for the next installment because I'm currently trying out products as well that I entertained, including in this video, but I wanna just keep it to five products or five categories since technically we did seven today. But anyway, let me know in the comments if there's something that you have been using and loving, whether it be skincare, hair care, makeup, share in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. On the end slide, I'm gonna link last month's video so you can watch that if you missed it. But if you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.